right, so <clears throat> the uh, main part of my journey to China is over and uh, I just wanted to take a little bit of time just to have a look at the bike, give a bit of a, a review of uh, things that worked well, things that didn't work so well, things I liked and things that broke. Um, hopefully it's help, helpful to people. Uh, I know a lot of people have wanted me to do a sort of a, a bike overview. Uh, so I guess we start at the front. One thing that's really impressed me on this trip are these uh, Schwab um, all motion tyres. Uh, they're designed to be a tubeless tyre and uh, this one here is set up tubeless. This tyre, I have not had a single puncture in uh, 12, uh, nearly 13,000 kilometres, 12,500 kilometres, this tyre is completely untouched, which is remarkable really when you think about uh, that kind of distance. Uh, obviously it's on the front and uh, the, you know because I've got the cool trailer uh, the bike itself is actually quite unloaded so there's not too much weight on the front um, which is you know to its advantage. Uh, I had the same tyre set up tubeless on the back and uh, I've got a video of that uh, when, I, when I changed it when I got the fourth puncture uh, I, I swapped it out to because the hole was so big it couldn't seal it so I swapped it out to a tube. Uh, but I would still absolutely recommend it. These things are absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'd definitely use them again. <clears throat> uh, the top tube bag, that's one of the things that broke quite early on. Uh, the zip broke. Uh, it's mostly my fault because I always like to keep my passport in here and it's just a little bit too big. The corner just pushes into the zip and uh, you force it enough times, uh, it's going to break. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but mostly my fault because my passport's in a kind of chunky waterproof thing. Uh, but that's that's only a minor thing, but obviously it's quite annoying when you're on the bike when this is like your main access storage. Uh, same on this zip on the Jones handlebar, the Jones H-loop bar bag. Uh, I could easily fix this one probably, it's just got a bit of material stuck in it, I can't unzip it past there. Uh, it's pretty good this bag, pretty happy with it, there's not a lot of space in it. Uh, and when I had, I've taken it off now, I had the data box from Grintech here, which is part of the SunTrift, that does all the data logging. So. Once that's been processed, I'll have access to all the data from the entire trip. All the energy in, all the energy out, absolutely everything. Uh, the sp average speeds, everything. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. It's going to be nice to get that and share it with people. Yeah, but like I say, when I had this up like that, it was actually quite hard to get access to this bag. But it's, uh, it's still pretty good. And the handlebars are very comfortable. They're a nice shape. The Ergon grips. Um, the Ergon grips are pretty good, they tend to destroy your hands after a while though. I mean it's, it's comfortable but you get a lot of, uh, in the heat, you get a lot of rubber. Obviously you can see, like, I can probably show you underneath. I mean it started off looking like, uh, whether you can see that or not, I don't know, like a, a really hard textured grip. Now it's completely smooth, obviously that rubber's got to go somewhere and it goes on your hands. Same with the roll off uh, shifter. Uh, this always leaves so much, so much rubbish on your hands. It gets pretty annoying after a while, and in the wet, um, it's a, sometimes can be a little bit tricky to shift. It's sometimes I find it's better to grab the actual fat ring part to try and shift gears. <coughs> um, so on this bike, all the electrical stuff is is in on the bike itself. Some people on the Sun Trip had batteries in the trailer, and um, of course, some people had a motor in the in the little rear wheel which makes a lot of sense, but some people had the batteries in the trailer but I, I wanted to keep all the electrical stuff on the bike so the bike is completely independent of the trailer so inside here you've got the battery you've got the solar charge controller that sits up here it's a Genesun uh, boost charge controller I'm only using one of those and uh, so the solar, pa the solar panels uh, they're, they're connected through here so you can remove all of these MC4 connectors not very good connectors but they're, they're good enough and this one here comes from uh, the other part of uh, the electrical system. So inside here I have a, uh, a book converter which basically just brings the battery voltage down to 12 volts for all my 12 volt things. So I've got a USB charger that runs, I've run the cable up here and it goes to my phone on the little quad lock. Uh, something which is also very very good, very handy. And um, this one is the other 12 volts that runs all the way back underneath the trailer and runs to the back of the trailer onto my uh, over intense 4 watt flashing light thing which I, th I really think is a lifesaver, that thing has been awesome and it's visible in the desert for like 2 kilometers, so it really it really helps improve your visibility so uh, sorry if I'm rambling a bit, I haven't really got a script for this <laughs> so in there I've got all my electrical stuff and um, 
yeah, no problems with any of that, which is really, really good. Uh, it's quite a mess of wiring in there, it's a real rat's nest. Um, moving down to the motor, it's the BBS HD. Now, the BBS HD, a lot of people know this, very common mid drive for conversions. Um, absolutely zero problems with it. Uh, I've, I've, I've said a few times in comments that I've had one of these before, back when I was a cycle courier. I've done over 12,000 kilometers on that one, and obviously now I've done over 13,000 kilometers on this one. The only thing about these drives that you have to do, you absolutely must do, is uh, when you get it, <coughs> uh, you need to open it up, and uh, it's really easy to do. Uh, I think I'm on the wrong side now. Uh, open it, open it up, and uh, clean out the the little bits of grease that are in there from the factory. Um, yeah, it's behind here. So you take this this uh, chain ring off. Uh, this is an aftermarket one. It's a Lecky Bling Ring 42 tooth. Again, that would be. I think that's really a must to use this motor. Uh, sorry about that, I can't not answer questions when people come over. Uh, which people tend to do a lot when you have such a weird bike. <laughs> so, um, I was saying behind here, you, you take this uh, chain ring off, behind there you've got the big gear, of the, which is part of the motor system, and uh, clean off as much grease as you can, and uh, pack it with, uh, I can't remember the name of it, Mobile 28 is the one that's kind of accessible to Europeans, and, the, uh, and there's uh, another one in... Uh, or Aeroshell or something like that. I can't remember. If you if you search, if you're looking for it, you'll find it. A certain type of grease anyway that that, that doesn't degrade uh, plastic because there is a nylon gear at the back, and just in case the grease seeps through, you don't want to be uh, degrading that. Um, the roll-off internally geared hub. I mean that's well established to be uh, the ultimate uh, gear system for world touring. I don't need to say much about that. It's uh, everything you read about it is true. It's it's absolutely fantastic it's a joy to use and it's completely reliable even with uh, you know lots of lots of power coming through it from me and the motor no problems and um, what else we got <laughs> obviously the frame itself it's a surly troll again another thing that you don't really I don't really need to talk about here it's a well established uh, steel bike frame that's can pretty much do anything you can fit any type of brakes on it you can think of you can fit the roll off on it uh, very easily and with a disc brake as well <coughs> um, yeah obviously very good very very good you can fit um, uh, pretty fat tires in it as well I think it goes up to three inch which is nice uh, one thing I would probably have done differently I would have probably got two of these uh, I think Surly calls these tug nuts or something they're just chain tension as you just turn that because it's basically with the roll off in there it's basically a single speed you've just got a single chain line uh, it just means that when the chain gets loose you can tighten that, but it would be kind of nice to have one of these on either side. You don't really need it, because uh, their main function is to stop the whole thing sliding forward under, under power. But it would just make things a little bit easier to keep the back wheel straight, especially when you've got the disc, the disc on there. Um, but yeah, that's all very good. Uh, I'll talk about the trailer in a separate video, just because that's kind of its own topic. One thing I didn't like is this, this back tyre. Now this is a, a Marathon Mondial by Schwab. Um, which, like the roll-off and the, and the Surly Troll frame, is again regarded to be a, an excellent tyre for round-the-world touring. Um, I think the problem is, for my tour, uh, it was mostly tarmac. I mean, there were some horrible patches of tarmac, especially near the Kazakhstan-Russia border. Um, but I really just didn't need this really aggressive tread. Uh, when it was new as well, it was, it was even more aggressive. And uh, I found that this tire was extremely prone to punctures. Uh, the problem is where the tread is. I have no idea if you can see any of this. Uh, where the where the tread is, obviously it's super thick, no problem. But I always get little pieces of wire that go between the tread, and and the bit between the treads is really thin. It goes through really easily, and there doesn't seem to be too much puncture protection under there. So I, I really would not use this tire again. There was a couple of times I was thankful for it, like in the, the heavy monsoon rain, obviously the, the big grooves help move the rain away, give you lots of grip, and coming on and off a ferry, and occasionally you end up in a little bit of mud, and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm glad I've got that back tyre. But overall, um, yeah, not that happy with it. Uh, but I brought this one from home, so that's what I had. you got, you got to use what you got, haven't you? Um, all right, so uh, I'll mention the uh, seat post. This is the Cane Creek. Uh, I think it's got a thud stopper, long travel. Uh, extremely happy with this thing. Uh, kind of, well, very expensive. It's like 140 British pounds, I think, somewhere in that region. Uh, but it, it really takes the edge off. Obviously, I don't have any suspension, 
and it means that you, there's not really any situation that you have to lift your normally you'd, if you see a bump coming you'd kind of use the pedals and you'd lift your weight out of the saddle just to stop it from uh, hitting you too hard but you really just don't you just kind of can keep sitting down and it takes the edge off any any little bumps or even slightly bigger bumps really happy with that I wasn't and it's obviously I haven't done anything to it I brought some more of these rubber things in case they wore out which they have a little bit but not to a point where it's a problem um, I think a lot of you have seen my video where I got given this saddle in Germany by a very kind uh, man running a bike shop called Velo Company uh, you can always go back and watch that if you're interested extremely happy with it the other saddle caused me insane amounts of pain <laughs> so this one is really good it's a C19 uh, Brooks saddle uh, other than that um, not a lot more to mention on the bike I don't think obviously if you've got questions uh, just let me know and I can answer those I want to do a, a separate video on the trailer and a little separate video showing the wiring diagram so uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.